What is a termination regulator? A simple transmission line ends with a matching resistor to ground. This is how early motherboards were always built. A termination regulator is needed when a transmission line ends with a matching resistor to a non-zero source sync voltage. So now that we know what a termination regulator is, why do we need one? It's to save power. With so many address and data lines, if some energy can be saved with each transmission line, then if there are a large number of address lines and data lines, then a significant amount of power can be saved. This is less important for desktop computers, but is very important with mobile devices, such as laptops. So here we see again a simple termination to a transmission line. However, there are many others. For the simple termination method, the power consumed is VDD squared over 2R. This is for a one or high level, and then power is zero for a logic zero. In the Thevenin termination method, the power consumed is three times VDD squared over 8R for both a zero and a one. So the amount of power is continuous, regardless of what the level is. The termination method with the lowest power dissipated per transmission line is SSTL, Stub Series Termination Logic, and the power dissipated is VDD squared over 12R for both a 0 and a 1 for each transmission line. This is much less power than the other two termination methods, but since this rail is one half of VDD, then it must be capable of sourcing and sinking current. So a DDR termination regulator is defined by JETIC as terminating address, command and control transmission lines with a matching resistor to a source sync termination rail that tracks the memory power rail at a voltage equal to one half of VDD. This slide shows what a good eye diagram looks like. As long as the high and low steady states and transitions from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 all stay outside the data valid window, then the SSTL receivers can easily discriminate between a 0 and a 1, and the memory will be read without error. Since there are many address and control lines, and statistically the number of ones on all these transmission lines will equal the number of zeros, then the VTT average current is going to be zero. But the VTT rail must be designed to handle large peak currents and still be able to keep the VTT rail within a few tens of millivolts from the reference. Since these address and control lines may require the VTT rail to go from full sourcing current to full sinking current, and this may happen in just a few nanoseconds. This slide shows the progression of DDR1 to DDR4. DDR1 had a VTT voltage of 1.25 volts, and now with the new DDR4 designs, VDT is 600 millivolts, and the two graphs show the relative scale between these two voltages. This helps to illustrate how a 100 millivolt offset error might have been tolerated in DDR1, but it would be unacceptable in DDR4. So new designs need to be reevaluated to see if the more stringent DDR4 requirements are still being met by the regulators used in previous DDR designs. The on semiconductor NCP51199 is a drop-in replacement for a popular industry standard part made by many manufacturers. The NCP51199 was tested against six competitor parts and was proven to be best in class. With a 2 amp load transient 
the NCP-51199 shown in the top trace is able to keep the VTT rail within 38 millivolts peak to peak from the reference input. If a popular competitor part is loaded with this same 2 amp transient, the competitor part is unable to keep VTT within safe limits and the transient load causes a 159 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak error transient to appear on VTT. This is shown in the bottom competitor trace. This 159 millivolt error transient could cause a data valid window violation and could lead to a blue screen hardware crash. On Semiconductor has DDR termination regulators for every application. For desktop and laptop in high volume and low cost, we have three parts in the SO8 exposed pad packages. For server applications where higher current is needed, we have several parts with options enabling a customized DDR3 and DDR4 design. These parts are all in the DFN10 3x3mm package. In tablets and mobile applications where size is an important design factor, we have four parts that are in the DFN8 2x2mm package. And for automotive infotainment and driver assistance systems, we have several parts that have been automotive qualified.